Ghostly tales, yet mirrors of human life. Hey everyone. Welcome to Encountering Chinese. Ghostly tales from Liao Zhai. Today, I'm going to tell you a story called Liancheng. In Jining County, there was a man surnamed Xiao. Let's call him Chiao Sheng. Chiao Sheng was exceptionally intelligent and gained local fame in his youth for his outstanding talent. However, as he entered his 20s, he still struggled and did not achieve success. Chiao Sheng was known for his sense of righteousness, and he maintained unwavering loyalty to his friends. He had a good friend named Gu Sheng. But unfortunately, this friend passed away prematurely. After Gu Sheng's death, Xiao Sheng, out of a sense of loyalty, often assisted Gu Sheng's widowed wife and children. The county magistrate of Jining was impressed by Xiao Sheng's literary talent. When they met, they found that they shared common interests and became friends. Later, the magistrate passed away while in office, leaving his family in poverty and unable to return to their hometown. In a selfless act, Xiao Sheng sold all of his own property to escort the magistrate's coffin and family back to their hometown, a round trip of over 2,000 miles. This noble gesture further earned respect for Xiao Sheng among the literati but it also led to the decline of his own family wealth. There was a man named Shi Xiaoyan, and his daughter's name was Liancheng. Liancheng excelled in embroidery and was also well-educated. Shi Xiaoyan doted on his precious daughter and decided to showcase Liancheng's embroidered work, the tired embroidery, to solicit poems from young talents. His intention was to select a talented husband for his daughter. Xiao Xing also volunteered to contribute a poem, and his verse went like this. With a lazy bun and a high hairdo, dancing in the green and graceful posture. Early at the orchid window, embroidering the azure lotus. Piercing through the mandarin ducks, the soul almost breaks. Pausing the needle in secret, frowning with both eyes. Xiao Xing also wrote poems praising Lianqing's superb embroidery skills. Here is how he expressed it. The embroidered threads are picked as if depicting life. Flowers and birds in the composition naturally born. In the past, Weaving intricate brocades was not a lasting skill. Fortunately, it conveys sentiments and appreciation to the wise and enlightened. Upon receiving the poem, Lianqing was extremely delighted and couldn't stop praising the poet's talent in front of her father. Although Shi Xiaoyan looked down on Xiao Xing's impoverished family, Lianqing continued to commend Xiao Xing's talent whenever she met people. She even pretended to act on her father's behalf, instructing servants to deliver silver to Xiao Xing to support his studies. Xiao Xing exclaimed, Lianqing is truly my confidant. From then on, Xiao Xing poured his heart into loving Lianqing yearning for her like one thirsting for water. Shortly after, Lianqing was betrothed to Wang Huacheng, the son of a local salt merchant. Xiaoxing felt a deep sense of despair, yet Lianqing continued to linger in his dreams, making it difficult for him to forget. Soon after, Lianqing fell ill with tuberculosis, and her life hung in the balance. 
A monk from the western regions claimed to have the cure for Lianqing's illness, but required a piece of flesh weighing five grams from a young man's chest. The monk explained that the flesh needed to be crushed to prepare medicine. Shi Xiaoyan sent someone to inform Wang Huaqing about this, and upon hearing the news, Wang Huaqing laughed and said, Old man Shi Xiaoyan actually wants to cut a piece of my heart flesh. The servant returned and conveyed Wang Huaqing's response to Shi Xiaoyan. Helpless, Shi Xiaoyan could only announce publicly, Whoever can cut flesh for Lianqing will marry her. When Xiao Sheng heard this, he went to the Shi family, personally took a knife, and cut a piece of flesh from his own chest for the monk. His blood quickly stained his clothes, but the monk applied thick herbs to barely stop the bleeding. The monk immediately made three pills from Xiao Xing's flesh, instructing Lianqing to take one each day. After three days of taking the pills, Lianqing's illness was cured. Upon Lianqing's recovery, Shi Xiaoyan prepared to fulfill his promise to marry her to Chao Sheng. He had informed Wang Huaqing in advance, but to his surprise, Wang Huaqing was furious upon hearing the news. He immediately reported Shi Xiaoyan to the authorities. Helpless, Shi Xiaoyan hosted a feast for Chao Sheng and presented a thousand tails of silver on the table. He said to Chiao Sheng, I deeply regret betraying your kindness. Please allow me to repay you with this. He then explained in detail the reasons for breaking the promise. Angry, Chiao Sheng said to Shi Xiaoyan, The reason I didn't cherish the flesh on my chest was to repay the respect of a confidant. Was it for selling flesh for silver? After saying this, Xiao Xing left in a huff. Upon hearing about this matter, Lianqing felt deeply distressed. She sent a servant to comfort Xiao Sheng and conveyed a message, saying, With your talent, I believe you won't remain down and out for long. In this vast world, is there a shortage of good women? I had an ominous dream yesterday, estimating that within three years, I will likely depart from this world. You don't need to vie with Wang watching for someone who is on the verge of death like me. Xiao Sheng asked the servant to convey to Lianqin. Ancient wisdom says, a scholar is willing to die for a true friend and it's not for the beauty of a woman's exterior. I still worry that Lianqing may not truly understand me. But for anyone who truly understands me, even if Lianqing and I cannot be husband and wife, what does it matter? The servant expressed Lianqing's sincere feelings for Chiao Sheng. Chiao Sheng responded, If she truly has deep feelings for me, then the next time we meet, she should give me a smile. I will have no regrets even if I die. A few days after the servant left, Chiao Xing happened to be outside and coincidentally encountered Lianqing returning from her uncle's house. He stared at her in a daze. Lianqing, with a graceful gaze, looked at Chiao Xing and smiled. Overjoyed, Xiao Sheng muttered to himself. Lian Sheng is truly my soulmate. After some time, when Wang Huaqing sent someone to discuss the wedding date, Lian Sheng's old illness suddenly relapsed. Several months later, she unexpectedly passed away. Xiao Sheng, upon hearing the news, came to offer condolences. 
In the end, he unexpectedly wept bitterly in front of Lianqing's spirit tablet and collapsed, succumbing to death. Helplessly, Shi Xiaolian had to send someone to bring Xiao Xing's body back to the Xiao family. Xiao Xing's soul became aware that he had already died, but there was no sense of sorrow. He strolled out of the village, still hoping to catch a glimpse of Lianqing. Looking into the distance outside the village, he noticed a road running north and south, crowded with people like ants. Unconsciously, Xiao Xing blended into the crowd. After a while, he found himself walking into a courthouse and coincidentally ran into an old friend, Gu Sheng. Gu Sheng looked at him in surprise and said, How did you end up here? He reached out to take Xiao Xing's hand, intending to send him back. Xiao Xing sighed and said, I still have some unfinished business, so I don't want to leave yet. Gu Xing replied, I manage official documents here and enjoy the trust of my superiors. Thanks to your help for my family in the mortal world, if there's anything I can do for you, I will not hesitate. Xiao Xing then inquired about Lianqing's whereabouts, and Gu Sheng led him around. They searched several places and finally saw Lianqing sitting with a white-robed lady in a corner under the eaves. They had sorrowful expressions, tears streaking down their faces. When Lianqing saw Xiao Sheng, she immediately stood up, asking him joyfully how he arrived. Xiao Xing said, How can I continue to live in the mortal world when you've left like this? Lianqing cried again, telling Xiao Sheng, As someone as ungrateful as me, you should have given up early. What's the point of sacrificing yourself for me? Regrettably, in this life, we cannot be husband and wife. I hope in the next life, we can continue our connection. Xiao Xing turned to Gu Sheng and said, You have many matters to attend to, please go ahead. I would rather die like this than be reborn. But could you please help me find out where Lian Xing will be reborn? I want to go with her. After agreeing to Xiao Xing's request, Gu Sheng left. The white-robed lady asked Lianqing who Xiao Xing was, and Lianqing detailed her experiences in the mortal world to the white-robed lady. Upon hearing the story, the lady couldn't help but feel deeply saddened. Lianqing then introduced the white-robed lady to Xiao Xing, saying, This is my sister with the same surname. Her nickname is Bin Yang, the daughter of the governor of Changsha Prefecture. We've traveled together, so we take care of each other. Xiao Sheng looked at Bin Yang and found her to be equally charming and lovable. He was about to inquire more about Bin Yang when Gu Sheng returned. Gu Sheng congratulated Xiao Sheng, saying, I've handled your matters properly. Soon, Miss Lianqing can follow you back to the mortal world. Isn't that great? Xiao Sheng and Lianqing were both overjoyed. Just as they were about to bid farewell to Gu Sheng, Bin Yang burst into tears. Choking with sobs, she said, If Sister Lianqing leaves, where should I go? I beg you to pity me and save me. I am willing to be Lianqing's maidservant and serve her. Lianqing felt sad after hearing this, but she couldn't think of a solution. She asked Xiao Xing for help, and Xiao Xing turned to Gu Sheng, pleading with him. Gu Sheng was in a dilemma and firmly refused, 
saying there was no way to help. Xiao Xing pressured him to help, and Gu Xing reluctantly said, Let me give it a try. Gu Xing returned after about half an hour, shaking his head, and said, What should we do? I really have no solution. Bin Yang burst into tears again upon hearing this. She clung to Lian Qing's arm, afraid that she might leave at any moment. Everyone wore a troubled expression, helpless and unable to do anything but silently look at her sorrowful and distressed face, feeling heartbroken. Finally, Gu Sheng said with emotion, Just take Bin Yang away. If there's any blame, I'll bear it alone. Bin Yang then became happy and left with Xiao Sheng and others. Xiao Sheng was worried that Bin Yang had no companions for the long journey, but Bin Yang said, I'll go with you. I don't want to go back home either. Xiao Sheng replied, You're truly foolish. If you don't go back home, how can you be resurrected? When I arrive in Hunan in the future, if I happen to meet you and you don't avoid me, I'll consider it a great honor. At that moment, two ghost maids were going to Changsha to deliver official documents. Xiao Sheng asked Bin Yang to travel with them. Tearfully, Bin Yang bid farewell to Xiao Sheng and Lian Cheng. On the way back home, Lian Cheng walked very slowly, stopping to rest after every mile, and they rested over ten times before seeing the city gate. Lian Cheng said to Xiao Sheng, After my resurrection, I fear that there might be troubles at home again. Please retrieve my bones so that I can be revived at your home. This way, they won't be able to change their minds. Xiao Sheng also thought it was a good idea. So, they returned to Xiao Sheng's home together. As they entered, Lian Qing became anxious and frightened, as if she couldn't move forward. Xiao Sheng stood aside waiting for her. Lian Qing said, As soon as I arrive here, I feel weak, and my spirits are scattered. I am worried that our wish cannot be fulfilled. Therefore, we need to plan carefully now. Otherwise, even after resurrection, we won't be able to determine our future. So, the two of them held hands and entered the side room. They looked at each other in silence for a while. After a moment, Lian Qing smiled and said, Do you dislike me? Xiao Sheng was greatly surprised and quickly asked why she said that. Lian Qing shyly replied, I'm worried that even after resurrection, we may not fulfill our wishes. That would be another disappointment for your deep affection. Please let me repay you first in my ghostly form. Xiao Sheng was delighted to hear this, and the two of them shared a bed, indulging in joy and happiness. Xiao Sheng, tempted by worldly pleasures, delayed his immediate resurrection, and the two secretly lived together in the side room for three days. Lian Sheng urged Xiao Sheng to quickly enter the spirit hall, stating, as the saying goes, an ugly daughter-in-law will eventually meet her parents-in-law. We can't keep hiding here all the time, it's not a long-term solution. She pressured Xiao Sheng to move forward. As Xiao Sheng approached his own deathbed, his body immediately revived. Xiao Sheng's family, astonished to see him alive, didn't know how to react and quickly fed him some soup. 
Xiao Xing promptly sent for Shi Xiaoyan and requested him to bring Lianqing's remains, claiming he could resurrect her. Shi Xiaoyan, overjoyed at the news, followed Xiao Xing's instructions and brought Lianqing's body. As soon as Lianqing's body was carried through Xiao Xing's door, she woke up. Lianqing said to her father, Shi Xiaoyan, when I was a ghost, I had already pledged myself to Chao Sheng, and there is no reason for me to return home. If you still intend to marry me off to someone else, I will die again. Shi Xiaoyan agreed, returned home, and sent several maids to attend to Chao Sheng's household. Upon hearing the news that Lianqing had been resurrected and married to Chao Sheng, Wang Huacheng, filled with anger and shame, wrote a complaint and filed it with the local authorities. The officials, swayed by Wang Huacheng's bribery, once again ruled in favor of Wang Huacheng, assigning Lianqing to him. Chiao Sheng, furious but helpless, had no choice. Lianqing was forced to marry into the Wang family, refusing to eat or drink, only wishing for a quick death. In desperation, she even attempted suicide by hanging when there was no one in the room. After a day, Lianqing's condition worsened, and she was on the brink of death. Wang Huacheng, fearing the consequences, hastily sent her back to the Shi family, and Shi Xiaoyan had Lianqing carried back to Chiao Xing's home. Wang Huacheng, having no other options, had to accept the situation. After Lianqing recovered, she often thought of Binyang and planned to send envoys to Hunan to inquire about her. However, due to the long and difficult journey, this plan was repeatedly unsuccessful. One day, a servant rushed in and reported. There are many carriages and horses outside the gate. Chiao Sheng and his wife went out to see, and Bin Yang had already entered the courtyard. The three reunited, experiencing a mix of joy and sorrow. It turned out that Bin Yang's father, the magistrate, had personally escorted his daughter. Xiao Xing quickly welcomed the magistrate into the hall. The magistrate said to Xiao Sheng, My daughter owes her resurrection to you. She has long sworn never to marry anyone else. Today, I will fulfill her wish. Xiao Xing then respectfully performed the rites of bowing to his father-in-law. At this moment, Shi Xiaoyan also arrived, and they reminisced about their common ancestral roots. At the end of the story, the author provides a commentary, stating, Xiao Sheng and Liancheng, recognizing each other with just a smile, were willing to sacrifice their lives for one another. Some may consider such actions foolish. Are we to say that the 500 valiant warriors who died for their bosom friends at the end of the Qin dynasty were all fools? This demonstrates how rare and precious true confidants are. Virtuous and heroic individuals are moved by the genuine feelings of their kindred spirits and find themselves unable to resist. Surveying the vast expanse of the world, True confidants are hard to come by. Even scholars with outstanding talents merely yearn for the enchanting smile of a woman. How lamentable. All right. That's all for today's ghostly tale. Lian Shen. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please also encourage everyone to comment and share more. We'll see you in the next episode.